Welcome back. We're going to show you how to file a permanent administrative order. So coming into our dashboard again here, you're going to scroll down to the bottom to our rules work queue and grab a rule to go on a permanent filing. This is only happening after you've filed your notice or you have certain actions that are allowed to be on a perm. And so we're going to show you one of those today. So we're going to select a rule number. It's a renumber. So as many of us know, if you're renumbering a rule, that means you don't have any changes to your rule, then you can put that straight on a perm without noticing it. So we're going to do one of these special filings today. So I'm going to grab that. For a rule to go on a filing, it has to have that accepted status, um, even if nothing has changed in the text. So we've selected it. It's gone blue. And we're going to add it here to a permanent filing from our drop-down menu on the top and hit Create new filing. And here's a permanent administrative order for Chapter 166. Perms are by far the, the smallest, neatest of our rule filings because there's just not too much to it required by statute. Uh, permanents have gone through the notice process, so much of that information was already on the notice. Uh, so we have a few required fields, again shown by the red exclamation in the corner. Agency approved date, this is again the date that the agency commission or board has gaveled or voted uh, on the final version of the text, so it has to be on or before the filing date. And then the effective date has to be on or in the future, and you can select the future. The calendar knows the difference between these two dates and allows you to select different ones. Filing caption still has a 15-word limit, and that's shown here if it's required. And then we go down to our rules that we've got listed. We've only got the one, and it's a renumber. So here it's showing that we're renumbering it from 166-400-0025 to an entirely new chapter, actually. It's going to Public Health, 333-500-0025. has its title, the rule action, what we're doing. It doesn't have the notice file date, uh, so we don't have to select anything here because it's not required. If we were selecting a rule that was on a notice, we'd have a drop-down menu, and we would select which date we wanted to use for that perm, which filing date. If we had another rule number that had to be noticed, and it wasn't a renumber action, it was just an adopt or, say, an amend, it would have a notice drop-down of all the notice dates that we had previously filed on that rule number that you would then select from a drop-down menu. If you've only noticed it once and now you're getting to the perm, it would have just that date. You want to select that. You have the ability to add rules typically, but we have no others in our queue that are in an accepted state. So if we think we should, then we need to go back to the dashboard and go make sure those rules are accepted, and then we can add them here. And that's about it for that. We have the filing contact information that's on all the filing types. So again, you have your contact information that's not necessarily your roles coordinator. So you add that in with a street address and then business phone numbers. And then like the temporary, you also have an authorized signer. No longer do we have the authorization page. But you have to authorize that your signer, your delegated signer, has reviewed and authorize this filing by checking this box. You are not able to submit a filing until you've selected this box. So it's very important to take seriously there. And then our very familiar buttons down below, uh, save as text, return to dashboard, save, saving often, and submit, which submits the whole filing, this is permanent, to the Secretary of State's office.